Put weigh anchor and hoist the sail. Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If I look a little rough and I sound a little rough, it's because I have the cold to end all colds, the mother of all colds as they would say, and I've got Janice to thank for it. And oh yeah, by the way guys, Janice had this cold about a week before I did and while she was dying in bed, not going to work for a couple of days because she's so sick, telling me it's the worst cold she's ever had, she goes, oh, but we really got to go see the aquarium in Toronto, the Ripley's Aquarium this weekend since we can't do boat work. And I'm like, really? You just said you had the worst cold you've ever had and you're lying in bed dying and you're telling me you want to go to the Ripley's Aquarium in Toronto? Yeah, yeah, really want to go. I'm like, okay, sure you'll be up to it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be up to it. You know, you don't have to be a police officer to figure out there's something going on here. There's definitely an ulterior motive. So after I've agreed, okay, let's go. It'll give me a good opportunity to test my gear, film some stuff, and uh, yeah, sure, if you want to. So we booked the hotel, and then she goes, oh yeah, by the way, when we go, we're dropping off a couple empty suitcases, some empty boxes to Jake, who lives in Toronto. He goes to school there because he's uh, got about a week and a half between the end of his semester and when the new semester when he's moving into a house. So he needs some place to bring his stuff. So we're... Uh, being the free U-Haul uh, to take his stuff home. I'm like, ah, now I see the, fo uh, the motivation. That's the ulterior motive I was looking for. But yeah, guys, if you feel like there's some reason that their wife's not telling you the whole truth, and there's definitely some other motivation there, it probably, yeah, dig a little deeper, you'll find it. Anyways, it all worked out. Got to see Jake, which is good. And he's taking actual film and TV production studies at Humber College, and I got to see some of the camera gear he uses. Kind of puts my camera gear to shame. The professional stuff is big and beautiful and probably very expensive, but it was good to see Jake anyway, so good ulterior motive. Anyways, it was a good trip, and it gave me an opportunity to film with my two favorite lenses, the two lenses I'll probably, I thought I would use the most, and uh, my new camera, of course, the a7 III, my new gimbal, the Weeble Lab. Now, let's talk with the Weeble Lab. I want to give you these uh, thoughts now before the episode because not everybody's going to stick around to the end. So if I did all this, what my final thoughts at the end, not everybody would see it. Weeble. The Weeble Lab is definitely a great gimbal. I walked into the aquarium with this and it doesn't even raise any eyebrows because it looks just like you're a tourist with who just happens to have a little gimbal. Uh, now I didn't want to push it too far by putting a shotgun mic on top of this thing because then it doesn't look like just some tourist walking around. This thing is pretty big. Uh, it does great sound though and it's stereo. If you need it to be stereo, I love this microphone. But I didn't put that on. Now the downside is if you're trying to talk to the camera, if you do the triple click and you talk to the camera like this, the problem is the inbuilt microphone on the camera picks up everything from around you. So while you're talking to the camera like this, people talking over there, people talking over there, over there, over there, everywhere are all picked up on the camera. And you can barely hear yourself over all the other conversations that are going on. All right, turn around. Okay, here we are in Ripley's Aquarium. I don't know what percent we're through, maybe. Uh, hard to know. We're going to do so because this is the coffee shop. Yeah, we're kind of the break room. There we go. So um, yeah, so that's the downside. I think if I was going to shoot something where I, uh, audio was important, I would balance it with the shotgun microphone on top and just never go in the underslung mode where the, obviously you wouldn't be able to do it. So I just wouldn't do that. But yeah, it was great without it other than the audio kind of sucks if you're talking to the camera. There's another issue I found. There's a dead spot in the middle. When you first move the gimbal just a little bit, the camera doesn't actually change. It sort of stays in center. And then once you get past a certain point and it realizes you want to turn, then it sort of snaps into start mode. It kind of jerks to a start. Now I know, I've researched it. You can go in the ZY Play app and change the settings. Change that dead zone in the middle to be narrower so it's not as obvious that there's a dead zone there. And also change the speed that it starts uh, slower. So that can be fixed. I did notice that. I've got just the factory settings and that definitely needs to be fixed. So I'm glad I figured that out. Now let's talk about the camera and the two lenses that I, that I used. Camera, the a7 III has been awesome. The autofocus is amazing compared to my Panasonic's that I've been using in the past. So I'm really happy with the camera. Nothing to complain about there. The two lenses I used, one, I love this lens. It could be the perfect all-in-one lens. If you only had money for one lens, I would use this one. This was my one I work, walked around with during daytime. The 16 to 35 millimeter F4. Not the F2.8, the really expensive G Master version, but the F4 version. I found in most cases you never get below f4 anyway, so why pay the extra money when you can get this one for way, way cheaper? It's the perfect focal length from 16 millimeters, which is ultra wide, to 35 millimeters, which is almost the perfect size or width that a normal human eye looks at. It looks great. So that's a great all-around lens, and I would definitely suggest that one. Now the other one is this one here. It is the 24 millimeter G Master f1.4. I uh, 
<laughs> I'm pressing the go button, so now it's doing all sorts of weird things. Let's just put this down. Anyways, uh, the 24 millimeter f1.4, the problem with it is sort of what I was talking about with this, f4 is perfect. You almost never get to use the f1.4. 1.4 means the aperture is super wide, letting in tons of light. Problem is in most settings, it's way too much light. So you end up having to, if you wanna keep the 180 degree rule, if I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, I have to have my shutter speed at 1 50th of a second. Therefore, it's a pretty long exposure, and if you have your aperture wide open, it's just way overexposed. So you have to change your f higher and higher to make the aperture smaller and smaller. So most of the time I was walking around with the 24 millimeter 1.4 at f4 or 5.6 or 8 or even 16. So I'm like, I paid all this money for 1.4 and I'm never getting to use it. There was only two times during this episode that the f1.4 was even used. One time Janice and I were outside of the Eaton Center talking to the camera and I had it at 1.4. There's a downside. With 1.4, the depth of field is so narrow that when I'm talking to the camera and it's focusing on my face, Janice who's right to my left is just a little bit further away, her face is slightly out of focus. So it's crazy how thin the depth of field is. If I'm in focus and Janice is right here, she's out of focus. Just a little bit. I mean, not blurred out, but just a little bit out of focus. Everything behind us, the background, is completely like perfect bokeh, like just blurry. Uh, uh, it's, it's great, it's kind of a cool look, but if you're going for that, it's great, but you better not have two people standing a foot apart because the one person will probably be in perfect focus and the other person will be slightly out of focus. Very narrow depth of field. The only other time I used it is in the aquarium. There's one area where we're walking through kind of a glass hallway in a cave and it's really dark, and I thought, hey, this is my opportunity to use the f1.4, so I dial open the aperture to 1.4 and I'm filming a shark and it looks all crisp and clean uh, and then another fish swims in the middle <laughs> between me and the shark and all of a sudden I'm like oh wait a second now it's got the fish in front is in focus and the shark that I was trying to focus on in the back goes slightly out of focus so yeah super narrow depth of field just be advised if you're going to go all the way to wide to the widest uh, open aperture at 1.4 you're going to have super narrow depth of field so yeah if you're going for that creamy bokeh background, blurred background. It's a great lens. If you want a little bit wider depth of field, you're probably going to have your f at f4 anyway and above. So yeah, you're probably not going to use f1.4 that often and you're spending a lot of money for that lens. So unless you're into astrophotography or nighttime street photography, you probably don't really need an f1.4. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. Anyways, hopefully you enjoy this episode. You're going to see those two lenses in action and the gimbal in action. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think. And until next time, ciao for now. Can you believe this is April 6th? We're supposed to be working on our boat this weekend. Guess not. Good morning, people. It is April 6th. And it doesn't look like April 6th outside, does it? No, it snowed snowballs last night. Yeah, I'll throw in some footage of this massive flakes yeah. coming down there. About the, the size of snow we've seen all year. Silver dollar size yes. flakes. It was crazy. And that was on April 5th, the night of April 5th. Mm. This was our weekend. We were supposed to be working on the boat. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we can't work on the boat. No. So we're going to go to Toronto to the Ripley's Aquarium. Yeah, she talked me into so that. To do, and to stop by and visit my son yeah. for a minute. And we both sound different because we both have colds. Cause I had it first. And she gave it to me. Yes. Today is my first day with this cold and I'm thanking her. I was at the end of it and I gave it to him. Yes. I thought I made it through, but no. So I might start sounding like Barry White as the weekend goes along. But anyways, we're going to Toronto. It's going to be about a five hour drive if you're not from Canada. Toronto is the biggest city in Canada. It's about five hours drive from here. It's what? Over two million people there. It's a big city. Mm -hmm. Ottawa is about one million people, the entire Ottawa metropolitan area. So, anyways, much bigger city than Ottawa, but uh, yeah, I, I used to live so there. Janice used to party there. Yep. I, I used to Toronto. live there for nine months. I think it's okay. She says it's great. But and that's... my son goes to school there now, and we'll be staying yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice city, really, really big, really, really uh, lots of things to do. So we're gonna go to the Ripley's Aquarium and maybe check out Young Street. Yeah, downtown Toronto. Downtown Toronto. I'm gonna bring my camera gear because I wanted to do some filming of different lenses. Hopefully, we have a good time. Yes. Yes, it's better not. than doing nothing. We, we always film these before we go. We have no idea. It's so. better than doing nothing. Yeah, it's better than doing nothing. Yeah. So see you then. Okay, we made it to Toronto. Look at our our, our room. It is huge by our standards. And we got this for sixty five dollars U S on Priceline plus the fees. So it ended up being like eighty seven with taxes and fees. But look, you got a kitchen with a, an apartment sized fridge, sink, dishwasher, a stove, and a microwave. Like it's a full kitchen. And you get a big desk. Couch, TV, king size bed, like massive bed. 
know if this wide angle is doing it justice, but this place is huge. There I am. Like massive. So this is one of those long-term stay kind of condo. They called it a condo, three-star condo. And it's, um, what brand is it? Marriott? Marriott. Residence Marriott. Now, we got a cheap, the cheapest room <laughs> express deal, so we probably don't have much of a view. I take the Fs down to F22. So this is a courtyard. Yeah, it's better than a highway or a parking lot. So it's yeah, not bad. there's the pool. Oh, that's right. Let's there's an indoor out. pool. Check that out. Zoom down in there. You can see the little water. Awesome. Okay, let's get unpacked. Toronto is definitely more hustle and bustle than Ottawa. It's also a little bit different than Ottawa. Here you're going to hear three different people on bullhorns. Two are promoting Christianity and one's promoting Muslim or Islam. And yeah, they're trying to talk over top of each other. In the cross of Show Jesus me where Christ. Allah loves Chinese people. It's found Show in the cross of Jesus like Christ. Immigrants. Jesus is the way, the Can truth, and the life. Turn to Jesus today. And see, I'm not the only one with a gimbal. While I'm filming this guy, look, this other guy walks in with his gimbal. Yeah, so I'm like every other tourist. She was checking out the hot dogs. Like, but look, it smelled so good. French fries and a sausage. I just asked him, what do they charge for that? He's like, five bucks. I'm like, that's wicked. That was actually, that's a good deal, but I don't have any cash, so I didn't get it. And we just ate a ton of food, too. Yeah, but, that yeah, but it's five dollars. It smells really good. <laughs> Okay, we ate a ton of food in our hotel room with our kitchenette, but Janice can't help herself and got street meat. Hello everyone. Hi. We've had a great day of walking around downtown Toronto. We're here kind of outside of the Eaton Center. Eaton's, Toronto Eaton Center? Still called that. Means where, yeah. Even though Eaton's that. doesn't exist anymore, still called the Toronto Eaton Center. And uh, we'll just give you a 360 panorama. I have my low light lens on here. This is the 24 millimeter f1.4 at 1.4. So uh, yeah, let's check it out. The drive to Toronto has made it filthy. Filthy.
Okay, we've decided since the aquarium didn't take us that long, we're gonna go into Steam Whistle and have a beer. Well, I'll have a beer. Janice will have Not that. a coffee. <laughs> she doesn't like beer. She's so high maintenance. <laughs> this is interesting. Let's go and see what's down here. You can look at their brewery. Oh. How did you like the beer that I gave you a taste of? <laughs> she doesn't like beer.
That's where you buy your tickets. So you get your tickets to play there. Yeah. Not your type of thing, though. I never liked video games, even when I was a kid. Uh -huh. Nope. I clearly. Buddy, daddy inside. I clearly am the kid inside, even yeah. though I'm older than she is. Anyways, we're gonna head back to our car now and uh, call it a day. Oh, I wanted to ask you, what did you think of the uh, aquarium? What did you think of the aquarium? I liked it. I mean, it's obviously not the best in the world, but for driving this warehouse, yeah. it's pretty nice. For Toronto, because it's downtown yeah. Toronto and land is at a premium down here. Yeah, they had limited space to work yeah. with, that's for sure. It's right, right there. Next to the CN Tower. Yeah, like it's crazy. I've. I mean, right next to the CN Tower must be very expensive land. Let me turn it around for a second here. Ooh, turn the uh, turn the F value down. It is a little bit expensive to get it for what you get. Yeah, like we maybe spent two hours. We could have taken more time, but there is the CN Tower. But uh, yeah. So there, we've done it, but likely not a repeat thing. Like every year I go to Wonderland, I love it. The rides are awesome and yeah. it's worth the money to get in. This is probably a one-time thing. I don't think yeah, we'll do it. just something to say we did it. Yeah, we did it. But Yay. it was uh, would have been what seventy-four dollars Canadian. Yeah, but I got a D and D discount. She so. gets a Department of National Defense bucks. discount, so we saved fifteen bucks. But uh, yeah, I mean, you're not going to spend an entire day at the aquarium. No. You can spend an entire day at Canada's Wonderland yes. for the same amount of money, pretty much. Two entire days. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, it was worth doing, but one-time deal. Yeah. All right, that's it for now. So just as an idea of where we are, you've got the aquarium there, you've got the CN Tower. Are you a home video? There. Send to somebody? No, you, no, not a home video for you. It's for YouTube. You want to be on YouTube? A little. <laughs> a little bit? <laughs> not too much. Well, we've got a channel, so we're filming for that. Okay. So I'll take you maybe 300 hours of YouTube in my lifetime. Okay, I don't care. Right? Yeah. Oh, well, it's for me. For yeah, there, sure. there you go. <laughs> Have a good day. Okay, Let's start that again. <laughs> uh, so there's the aquarium right beside Canada's tallest building, the CN Tower. It used to be the world's tallest building when it was first built, but yeah. Needless to say, Dubai and all these other places have built much bigger things. And then this is the Sky Dome, or now they call it the Rogers Center. Uh, where the Blue Jays play. So there you go. And this is the rec room we were just in. It was pretty cool. If you want to kill a day being yeah, a kid, you being an arcade. Spend a day in there. Yeah, well, yeah, you for sure. Would have liked it better than the aquarium. If you're a little older school and you want to see trains, there's a train museum here. And then that steam whistle bar is on the other end, over on the far end over there. So there's lots to do down here. Make it worth your parking. Oh, we got a good deal on parking too, didn't we? Twelve bucks for the day. Twelve bucks for the day. So come on a weekend. Twelve Literally bucks. Over there. Yeah, twelve bucks for the entire day. You could come home in the morning and be here until midnight, and twelve bucks, Canadian. So that's not too bad. All right, let's head back to our car. Oh, not a crosswalk. Oops. But they were stopped, so that would have been a good time. Well, I'll go. Just follow this guy. Okay. <laughs> Once one guy goes, you go. What the heck is going on here? It's Z Zamboni race, and police officers are escorting it. That is uh, interesting. Street meat. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Yeah, you're hungry. Three fifty for a sausage, way cheaper. Mild po yes, I'll take a mild Polish for three fifty. All right, we're gonna get street meat again. Yeah. Woohoo! All right. That's our lunch. Do you do I? You want to go? You got my wallet. Take my money. I got your money. Take my money. <laughs> Even though Janice and I are trying to be on best behavior when it comes to diet, this episode makes us look like we just eat street meat all the time. We don't, but this stuff was delicious. Anyways, if you like the episode, give it a thumbs up, shows the channel some love. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising and ciao for now. Wink, all right, hoist the sail.